Hello, I'm Greg Bell with Best Home Inspections. We're here today to show you a little bit of what we do on a home inspection so you'll have a better idea when you hire your inspector. The first thing we'll do is check the exterior, all the structure and up on the roof. So let me get my ladder and we'll go from there. Right, with this ladder, when I first set it up, I always like to slam it to make sure that all everything's locked so that nothing comes down when I'm climbing the ladder. A couple guys have had that experience and that's something I don't want to do. This type of roof is an architectural shingle. In Florida, we usually get about 20 years life on average. I know from checking the building permits, this roof was put on in 2001, so that makes it 15 years old. And for 15 years old, it looks to be in really good shape. So I have no doubt that they'll get more than 20 years out of this roof. Well, for insurance purposes, I need to take two pictures for the four point report. And I also take pictures of the valleys, the flashing, the ridge vent, the gas vents. The best thing about this roof is the geometry. It's a hip roof. So that's the best type of roof to have in Florida because the winds deflect right off of the roof instead of being a gable where it slams against the side. Here on this stack, you can see where the boot's been eaten away by the squirrels. And someone tried to do a repair where they just put blackjack all around to try and seal it so no moisture would get inside. Unfortunately, over time that cracks. And then whenever it rains, moisture gets inside and goes down to the roof deck. And the other important thing with this ladder is where, where you place your hands when you're letting it come down. If you place it too high, you're gonna get them pinched. And I know from personal experience, that's only gonna happen a couple times. With all home inspections, you have to take a picture of the elevation on each side of the house. And we need that for the wind mitigation inspection. Then I walk around, check out the soffit, the fascia, the stucco, the windows. Here on this bay window, you can see looking at the stucco, you've got different types of textures. That tells me that somebody's done a repair there. And I can look at all the water that would come off this roof during a rain and the way this cement slopes back towards the house, that there's probably been a moisture intrusion there. It looks like the homeowner just installed a brand new garage door. Now here on the side of this wall, you can see where the paint's starting to wear through. In Florida, it's important to keep your house well sealed so that no moisture intrusion occurs. So I'd recommend to this home buyer that they repaint their exterior with an elastomeric paint, and that'll seal all these cracks that are common in masonry construction. Well, this is common with bank-owned homes in Florida. The previous owners usually take all the systems in the house to try and recoup some of their investment. This is where the AC condenser used to be. Fortunately, he left the wiring here, so the AC just system just needs to be replaced. <clears throat> I would run new copper, because you don't know if that's been contaminated. Over here is the pump where it used to sit, and this is the well for the sprinkler system. Here again, they left the electrical in, so it's just putting in a new pump. Right here, we have the water shut off. So if you ever have an emergency in the house and need to shut off the water, you turn this valve right here. Now we're coming into the back of the house. The house has a nice pool and hot tub. I always like to take a cover photo for the pool, because most of the time, this is the nicest element of the house. Now you can see here again, there used to be a screen room here. You can see where the paint's different, where the framework was. Uh, probably took it and sold it for scrap. I noticed too on the exterior, 
All the light fixtures are missing, so all those will need to be replaced or put cover plates on them. You don't want to have that exposed wiring. And looking at the pool. Look in the skimmer, in the drain. And we have a bag in there. Don't want that. Well, the pool looks to be in good shape for being a bank owned property. Usually they're full of debris and covered and dirty and nasty. Here we've got the step into the hot tub. It's cracking, has some cracked tile. Crack here. You can see where somebody's tried to repair it. So you need to get a pool company to come out and resurface that. Here we have a storage building that was built out of wood. And you can see that there's some wood decay, which is very common in Florida. Whenever you use wood, we have a lot of moisture. A little bit of lattice repair. And more wood decay, which is common on older wood sheds. Here's the electrical panel for the shed. And I notice here by the panel, you've got a spliced wire. All splices should be in a junction box. All right, now we're gonna go check the pool equipment. Now this pool has just about everything. Your cartridge filter, your pump. This is a pool heater. This is your blower for the spa. And this is a salt pool. This right here is your salt cell. The nice thing about a salt pool is you don't have to use chlorine. They're a little expensive up front, but in the long run, they save you money. This here is the control panel. Now we can see it just told me the salt level was 3,900. So that's a little high, but that's okay because it was just treated. So let's go ahead and turn the filter on. We'll see how everything runs. I can see that all the drain lines are labeled. You have the pool cleaner, the pool skimmer, the main drain, the spa. Here you have the spa return, the air blower, and the pool return. Other than being a little noisy, it seems that everything works well. One nice thing, this is all stay right equipment. So that's all top of the line equipment. Now let's walk out to the pool and see if everything's working out there. And you can see water moving all around the pool. Pump has a lot of pressure. I don't know if you've ever had a salt pool, but it's really misleading because you really don't taste any salt. It's just better for the equipment and better for your skin than having all that chlorine in the system. Now, I highly recommend if you've never owned a pool before that you get with a local pool service company, maybe hire them for a few months so that you can learn and get an education from them on how your pool works. There's a lot of different pools and a lot of different operating systems. All right, here we have the gas meter. This is the main shut off right here. Uh, whenever it's turned down where the two holes line up, it's shut off. Everything looks good. Another nice feature of to point out here is this is the dryer vent and you can see the condenser used to go right there so they put this elbow on to direct the flow away from the AC unit. Don't usually see that usually it goes right in the condenser and then it clogs up the condenser. Now that we're done with the outside we'll come on the inside. First thing I like to do is check all the outlets. I use my meter so we'll go around. And 
my meter. Tells me everything's wired correctly, working. And we just go from room to room, test all the outlets that we can get to. And here you can see 119 volts. Everything's good. Now here, this is a bathroom outlet, so it should have a GFCI. Here I just tested it and it's not tripping, so there's no GFCI. That's an improvement I'd recommend they make. Now that we're done with all the outlets, we'll go into the kitchen, start our final walkthrough. No anti-tip bracket on the stove. That's a major issue because kids like to see what's up there. They'll put this down, climb up there to see what's there and it tips over and everything falls on them and they get burnt. Five minutes being proactive, you can avoid a lifetime injury for a child. Turn the hot water on. House has copper plumbing. Looks like everything under the sink's new. Check, make sure there's no leaks. Everything looks good. Let the hot water come through here. One thing I've learned over the years of being an inspector, it's a good idea to take pictures of all the common things that are in a house like the hot water. That way if somebody calls you after the fact, you can tell, show them that there was hot water. Need to improve the caulking around the countertop. Moisture can get back there. Just check all the cabinets. You'd be amazed how many times I find cabinets they've installed with drywall screws, which drywall screws aren't designed to carry that amount of weight. Check the refrigerator, freezer, 12 degrees. Check all the seals. The refrigerator is 39. Everything looks good. Make sure it's got a water hookup. Looks good. And we'll carry on through the rest of the house. Now we'll check the bathroom. Here we turn the water on on the sink. Check up underneath. Everything looks good. Make sure we have hot water running here. Hot and cold. Check the water closet. It's nice and secure. Uh, flash. Everything works good. Looks good. Here we have the bathtub. Make sure the tile's nice and solid. These older houses, it's always a concern, especially when you have a window in your bath enclosure. Moisture always gets behind. Everything here looks nice and tight. Check the window. Here you can see it catches. So you need to have that fixed. Here we have a gas furnace. This is part of the split AC system. Up here are all the coils, which is usually a conventional air handler. The coils are at the bottom. That's one of the drawbacks to a gas furnace.
Everything looks good in there. This was manufactured in 1992, so it's 23 years old. We usually get about 30 years life out of them. One problem I do see with this furnace is we have no combustion air, so they need to put a grill in the door so that combustion air can get in. And here we have a conductor that just terminates in midair. That should be in a junction box. Here in the bedrooms, we just check around all the ceilings, the walls, check out the windows. These are the old awning type windows, very common in the 60s when this house was built. Looking for any water stains, any leaks. And then we also go through the house and check the AC system, check the temperature to see what we have there. Here I have 56 degrees. Take a picture of that. Now here in the laundry room, it really depends on if the appliances convey or not, whether or not we operate them. If they do go with the sale, then we do operate them and make sure they function properly. If they don't go with the sale, we just check all their connections. In this case, I'm just checking all the connections. Everything looks good, the drain line power. Here we have a gas dryer. Everything's hooked up behind. There's a shut off on the gas valve. Everything looks good. Now we're going out into the garage. Out here we have the water heater. And the first thing I see on that is the discharge tube for the temperature pressure relief valve. That should extend within a couple inches of the ground. The way it is now, if that ever activated, it would be putting out high pressure and very high scalding water that would really injure someone. We have copper plumbing. Gas line has a shut off. This water heater was manufactured in 08. It's a 40 gallons, so that makes it eight years old. They usually last seven to 12 years. So with this being where it's located in the garage, if it does start to leak, most of the water is gonna go outside. Here we have the electrical panel. Here I can see we've got openings in the dead front. Those are a very easy fix. They make a little plastic insert, just like these right here, that slip right in. That way no one ever sticks their finger in there. And gets electrocuted. I always scan all the breakers first to take their temperature, so I can make sure that nothing in there is really hot. Everything looks good. I always touch the panel with the back of my arm. You want to make sure whenever you're touching something like this, you have your arm, palm of your hand facing towards you so that if it is electrified, your automatic reaction is to pull back. So let's take the cover off and see what we have inside. Inside the panel, I'm looking for any double taps, any hot wires, melted wires. 
right size breakers. Now here in this panel, I can see you have a GE panel. Here we have a Challenger breaker and a Square D breaker. Those should be changed out to a GE. This here is where the air handler used to be. That's the other part of the AC system. Uh, here again, gonna pull new co copper. The wiring still here, the ductwork. The ductwork looks kinda dirty. So that I would recommend that they have the AC contractor replace as much as he can. And clean the rest. There we have the garage service door. They have a new door put in. Everything looks good, just needs to be painted. Let's go check the windows and then the garage door. These are just single pane contractor grade windows. But in a garage, that's all you really need. Everything looks good. Here we have the garage door. Brand new garage door. Has all the supports that are required for the wind mitigation. The only thing I don't see on it is a sticker for the wind mitigation. Okay, there it is. It meets the current hurricane standards. I always recommend to my clients put a bolt and nut in this hole here so that this can't be engaged. It's when you have an opener, if a little child goes and engages that, not knowing any better, when you go operate the door, you'll have damage to the door or the opener. Here we have a Chamberlain garage door opener. The nice thing about this opener, it has a battery backup. And in today's technology world that we live in, it's also Wi-Fi, so they have an app you can put on your phone. So you can operate your garage door from wherever you are. So let's turn it on and see how it does. It's nice and quiet. Yes, it that earns its name, the Whisper Drive. We'll check the auto reverse. All right, that works good. That's a safety feature. Looks like the garage door installers did a good job. Now one of the last things I do on the inside is go through with my infrared camera. This allows me to see things that I can't see with a naked eye. It's one of the best tools I have. In the last year, I found six roof leaks that I couldn't see with a naked eye. I would have missed them if it wasn't for this tool. So let's go around and scan the house. What we're looking for is different colors. Different colors tell us different things. If it's red, it's hot. If it's blue, then it's cold. And usually red is an indication of missing insulation. And a blue would be a water leak. So let's go see what we can find. And I just scan the ceilings, the walls, and around all the windows. Now you can tell looking here, see the difference in the color. That tells me that there's no insulation above that attic hatch. It's one of the great things about this tool. I scan every attic before I go in it. That way I know where the missing insulation is. And here's another concern I find all the time in houses. 
is from the hurricanes we had in 04 and 05, it blew the insulation away from the edge of the house where the soffit vents were at. So I see that all the time, it's very common. Now that the inspection's done, I'll get with you, the home buyer. We'll go over all my concerns, show you the pictures on the computer. At that time, I'll answer any other questions you have and walk throughout the house to make sure you have a good understanding about the condition of the house you're looking to call home. We also include a home maintenance book at the, with our inspections. This is made by InterNACHI, and it'll answer a lot of questions should you ever have any about your home. Some things you can expect when you hire a home inspector, usually a typical Florida home, smaller home takes around two hours, depending on what we find. During the inspection, we cover everything from the ridge vent down to the foundation and everything in between. That covers your electrical system, heat and air, plumbing, roofing, structure, attic, everything that we can see during the inspection and that it's accessible. These are a lot of the tools that we use as a home inspector. It used to be when I first started, you know, you had a screwdriver and a flashlight. Today, with technology, we have all kinds of new tools. We have the infrared camera, have a drone for roofs that we can see that we can't get up on, electrical outlet testers, electric screwdrivers, moisture meters that come in handy to tell if anything's wet, thermometers, everything works great. So make sure when you hire a home inspector, he has all the modern technology that you need to use today to do the job.